and no one is turned away. There is singing and laughter as the hours pass by, but a hush comes the singing as the father sadly cries. My house is full, but my fields are empty. Who will go and work for Jesus today? Yes, it seems like God's children all want to stay around his table, but no one wants to work in God's field. No one wants to work in God's field. So push away from God's table. Look out through his window pane. Just beyond this house of plenty lies a field of golden grain. Yes, and it's ripe unto harvest, but the reapers were all day there in the house. Count the children, hear the father sadly say, I can hear God saying, yes, my house is full, but my field is empty. Come on, let's go and work for Jesus today. God's children all want to stay around this table, but no one wants to work in God's field. No one wants to work in God's field. Did you hear the words that he was saying? Will you go and work in God's fields? Nobody wants to work. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Elmer. Our Father, you have done so much 
for me. You have blessed me in so many ways. Your Holy Spirit has never left me. You filled me those many years ago as a young man, young man, and you never left me. So much has happened, taking me through so many trials, and you've always given me the victory. They were hard, and sometimes they're still hard, but you've taken me and you've taught me how to just believe you. Even when everything looked dismal, like there was no hope, you said I said that I would do it, and you eventually you did it. We need you this morning. The Plato family have blessed our heart. Just blessed us with their voices, with their lives. So bless me. This message that you laid on my heart. Let your Holy Spirit take it and encourage everybody that's here. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say amen for our, our quartet. Amen. Thank God for Jerry and Eric, Marcus. Let's give them a hand. Come on, let's give them a hand. Sometimes people play and play, and we talk about everybody else but the ones that are, that are here doing it. So we thank God for them. We want them to know that we appreciate them. My title is, You Are What You Eat. Boy, it really got quiet in here when I said that one. Yeah. Genesis, the ninth chapter. Ninth chapter of Genesis. Nine, three, and five. Three through five. It says, I, I want to start at the first verse. Saying, God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, be fruitful and do what? Multiply. And what? Replenish the earth. Or whatever your, um, your Bible may indicate. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every what? Beast of the earth. And upon every fowl of the air. Upon all that moveth upon the earth. And upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they what? Third verse. Every moving thing that liveth shall be what? Even as the green herb have I given you all things, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall you not eat. So you can't eat flesh with blood in it. But the Lord opened the door for man to eat meat. And he opened the door even further when they told the Israelites how to prepare it. But flesh... With the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, you shall not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I, what? Require. require. At the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. And I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to ask the ushers. Do the ushers have the uh, cards that, we, that I gave them? We're having on the first Sabbath in October. They gave them out already? Okay, you have them? Okay, I wasn't sure. Praise God. I want to thank uh, my wife and um, Tiffany. I couldn't think of my, my mind's on a message. My wife and Tiffany for putting that together. My wife, she started it, and Tiffany took it and ran with it. Did, did a beautiful job. Say amen. amen. Um, so we're going to continue to move forward. Amen. Amen. Now, you're probably wondering, what, what's he going to talk about? What, how's he going to address this diet? Really, it's, it's a lifestyle. <laughs> I was thinking about um, 
just what I've eaten and what I haven't eaten. And our, our perception, as I begin to study, I got, I got to say, as I begin to study and look at the things you should eat and what you shouldn't eat, I begin to push some stuff back. Yeah. So I don't know what I'm going to do here because y'all can really cook. Maybe I'll just make an exception on Sabbath. Amen. 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 Praise God. The perfect diet to enhance mood and optimize performance and health remains unknown. There's nothing perfect. Because everybody's different. Somebody can eat something and somebody can't. I used to eat, I love bananas. Yeah, I love bananas. I used to make bananas so I can't eat them anymore. Now I try to eat a banana, I get sick. I would get mad at my mother if I couldn't have two bananas. You can only have one at a time. Some of y'all don't understand that. So I ate too many. My body's saying I don't need any more. I don't need that anymore. It's really interesting when you take a look at meat. Some people say you can eat it. Some people say you can't eat it. I'm here to tell you that um, I had to go back and I had to do some studying and looking at this. And I'm telling you, I'm going to read what I, some of my notes here. The, the people for the ethical treatment of animals. And listen to this. Chickens are being dosed with antibiotics containing arsenic. Along with other animals which are being raised for human consumption. Roxon, an antibiotic commonly used on factory farms. What kind of farms? Contains significant amounts of the most carcinogenic form of arsenic. USDA researchers have found that eating two ounces of chicken per day, the equivalent of a third to a half of a boneless breast, exposes a consumer to three to five micrograms of inorganic arsenic. <laughs> oh, I'm not getting no amens now. <laughs> Daily exposure to low do doses of arsenic can dramatically increase the risk of cancer, dementia, neurological problems, and other ailments in humans. So what we eat, what we ingest, is impacting our body. Now, we can ignore it all we want, but it's still happening. The pharmaceutical companies, I got some of y'all attention. Pharmaceutical companies have done a wonderful job. I'm not hating on doctors, by the way. Now I'm just going to give you information. Amen. Keep going to your doctor. I'm not telling you not to go to him. Amen? Amen. But the pharmaceutical companies have done an incredible job since the 40s of convincing The institutions that teach physicians how to work with the sick, they, they slowly gave them the drugs, and now that's every time you go to a doctor, what does he prescribe? So now they've done a wonderful job in that, haven't they? Now we have the food supply. So what, they, what have they done with the food supply? They've convinced the people that are raising animals and vegetables quiet as is kept they're feeding the animals drugs that's what's going on as a result of that the country is over 50 percent obese oh got quiet in here again yeah yeah so what how does that impact us all right, let me, let, me, let, me, let me draw a picture here. Let me draw a picture. Yeah. If, if I'm eating meat and it has blood in the, in, the, in the meat, you know, some people go and they order a steak and they ha they, they, they'll eat it half raw. You all with me? Okay, half raw. Some people go and say, I just want a little red. When they, when they kill the meat, when they kill the animal and they take the meat, the meat decomposes. They give, it, they give it shots, right? 
to stop the decomposition, but it doesn't really stop it altogether. So they're taking dead meat and they're, and they're, and they're processing it. And they're packaging it. Lord have mercy. So, so essentially what, what we have going on is that all of the fast food places. I used to go to, um, what's that place? No, no, no. No, I used to go, who we used to go? No. I can't, no, no, I didn't, no. Anyway, Golden Corral. Now, Golden Corral, God bless them. But I've done some research, and since I stopped going. Just by the way they're handling the food. See, you got to look. There is a reason. I see, I see people, and you think it's funny, but I don't think it's funny. I think it's tragic. I think people that are, that are sizes that I can't imagine people being, physical sizes. And there's a reason for that, because of the drugs that have been put in the food, put in the vegetables. I, I'm trying to be careful what I say. There is a, there's one company that tried to, and I don't want to name the company. I know who it is, but I don't want to name them. One company that, that's trying to take the seeds and change the very seed that they put in the ground. Now, what will that do? That will change the plant the structure of the plant, it'll, it'll impact you. So how does that impact you with your walk with Christ? I'm going to read something for you. Follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. There's a chemical called di dioxin, which is in our environment, and it gets absorbed into the flesh of animals, which are later consumed by humans, according to leading scientists and the EPA, nearly 95% of dioxin exposure comes in the concentrated form of meat, fish, and dairy products. Dioxins bind to a cell, modifies its functioning, potentially causing a wide range of effects, including cancer, depressed immune response, nervous system disorders, miscarriages, and birth deformities. Now, all of that is going on right now. That's not something that's going to happen. To, that's happening. It's been going on for a long while. Saints, here's, here's what you can do. You can ignore the information, but you don't ignore the results. There is an incredible industry just on diet. Now, if you think about it, if the pharmaceutical companies can control what the doctors are doing, putting their pharmaceutical products in the animals and in plants. If they're doing all that, they're making millions and millions of dollars because they really don't care about me and you. Now, some of the things that I, some of, this, some of the information I have, I won't even give it to you. I tell you what it's done for me, it's made me push back. When I see the condition of people in hospitals, just from what they've been eating, and then the drugs and the response from the drugs, it's made me take another look at, at everything that I'm doing. People in general are aware that animals that are raised for human consumption are being given hormones and anti antibiotics, but it does not seem apparent that the general population is aware of the effects of these antibiotics or dioxins and what effects they will have upon them. Some people are aware that is why they opt to eat only grass-fed cows or free-range chickens. Unfortunately, even these animals are not safe to eat. The fact is that the risk of getting colon cancer is increased by individuals whose diets are low in fiber, high in fat, and animal protein. Now, this is one of those messages that not a whole lot of people saying amen. What you need to do is you need to think about who you are and what you're doing with your body. It's only your body. You have to decide what you eat. I'm not standing up here pointing the finger at anybody. 
The first finger comes at myself. But you have to decide. Yeah. There's ten foods that you should try to avoid. Sugar. Y'all know this. Or corn syrup. Candies. Dried fruit. By the way, my wife doesn't know what I'm preaching. She's sitting here getting a hit just like you. I don't tell. She has no idea what I'm going to preach every Saturday. So when I stand up here and preach, you don't think that she had an inside view. She doesn't. Because some of the things I'm bringing out here are hitting me and her. Cereals. Snacks. Fat-free potato chips. Cookies. Cakes. Fat-free oatmeal cookies. Flour, rice flour, jams and preserves. Pancakes is included. Bread, toast, bagels, pizza. Cinnamon raisin bagel, toasted. And this is a good one, potatoes. Hash browns. And God said, I behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a yielding seed. To you it shall be meat. Got quiet. Amen. Genesis 130. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. So everything... Everything, everything, almost everything we're eating, we need to re-examine. Look, don't hate the messenger. I got my hands up, amen. Don't get attitude with the pastor. It's health day. I'm trying to support my, one of my leaders. Amen. But I'm telling you, saints, this impacts your health. It impacts the way you think. It, it impacts the way you carry yourself. Everything that you do, what you eat, impacts it. High blood pressure, nothing more than the, eating wrong food for a long time. It's not just stress. It's food that you've eaten over time. All of this. That's why this country is in the condition that it is. Now, let me take it back a few years. A long time ago, when McDonald's, when McDonald's was, wasn't a national chain. Go back around 50 years. When we used to go there, we used to get real hamburgers. Real hamburgers. Now I don't know what they're giving. Completely different. If you look at the food, Kentucky Fried Chicken. I remember Kentucky Fried Chicken. I remember Kentucky Fried Chicken when it had really good, it was really tasty and really good. Now it's changed. Everything. 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 Don't worry about him. Don't worry about him. It's all over with. You know, he'll be ashamed of how he acted. Don't, just, just love him. Just love him. Wrap your arms around him and love him. 
The impact of the food that you eat changes the, the constitution of your mind. What do I mean by that? How I think and how I make decisions is based on what I ate that morning. So if I have juice, if I juice, I've juiced, I've did four, you know, you all, you all been here. You know I've done fasting and I've done raw diet. Amen? Amen. So the church knows that. You also know I love to eat. And you also know I love the way y'all bake those cakes and pies. Glory to God. We're going to have to bless them and eat them. <laughs> but we got to really look at our individual tastes and where we're headed. Because if I can't think straight, God can't give me the message that he wants me to give that neighbor that lives next door to me. Amen. If I don't think straight, then where I'm working at, the people on the job, Watch my weight go like this. Watch my eyes get better. Watch my color clear up. Watch my hair begin to grow. Y'all not with me. Because I'm eating the right thing. And it's harder now. Because when you walk in that supermarket, almost everything in that supermarket, you need to be pushing it away. Conversely, when I was a child, my stepfather had a, had a garden. All my friends' parents had gardens. We would go in the garden. And we would, not me, because I wasn't going in the garden. I'd go in there and eat. I didn't do no work. Had tomatoes that big, I, I used to eat a tomato like an apple. Now I can't hardly eat tomatoes because it's got too much acid. I love them. Y'all with, with me? So I didn't see a whole lot of people that were larger than they needed to be. I'm not trying to offend anybody here. But there's a reason that we're in the condition that we're in. And we got to really wake up and do the things that's best for us individually. I can't make you do or eat something that you don't want to eat. That's up to you. That's between you and God. But I'm here to let you know God is calling for us to be lights in this world. And you can't be a light if you're walking around sick. You just can't be a light. So well, I got this condition. Why do you have the condition? Most of the con Almost all the conditions that we get can be remedied if we change our eating habits. I run across people that are 10, 15 years younger than me and, and just in the in condition that they're in is because of what they're eating. Amen. Wow. God said to Adam and Eve, you have the fruit, that's all you need for your body. Our bodies were just made for fruit. Peanuts. The natural. That's what our bodies are made for. But even in the natural, the antediluvians went crazy. They were doing things we don't even know about. They had to because God had to kill everybody. Isn't that right? So, if they had been obedient and faithful in, every, in the small things, then no, we wouldn't have known about Noah because we'd all be living the way we were supposed to live. So he changes the diet. He adds meat into the diet. So God adds meat to Noah. So, that, so, so God is really saying to man, you're not going to live almost a thousand years anymore. Your, your lifespan is only going to be 120 years. And when you get somebody living 115 years, 160 years, everybody's celebrating that. Y'all not saying amen. Everybody's celebrating that. So God knew what he was doing. Because look at, look at the world today and the condition that it's in. So some of us, we're doing everything, can, everything we can. I feel sorry for the women. Because women have a hard time losing weight. Now, just the way their body is made up. They got to carry the child. They got to carry the food for the child. There's just so much that the women got to deal with. We can walk into the, to the, to the uh, I'm looking at Jerry. We can walk into the gym and look at, and look at the treadmill and lose three or four pounds. <laughs> Woman will stand there and work for three weeks and lose two pounds. I mean, they be, it, I watch them at the gym. They're in there. Work, I can't work out like they work out. I just have to be overweight. <laughs> Thank you. 
So I feel sorry for the women. I got you all in prayer. I'm lifting you up in prayer. I'm sure I'm lifting you up in prayer, man. Amen. Because you're really going through a lot. You deal with all the emotions. You deal with every you deal, the husband, the children, the job, everybody. Women trying to take care of everybody. That's just their nature. Man, we just get up, and <laughs> eat, and go work. Come home, work out. She look around. We done lost twenty pounds. She ready to throw something at us. What's it got to do with serving God? The Lord understands all that, but I'm here to let you know, saints, this time you got to make a decision about your own health. This is about your health. That's all this is about, your health. God said that he gave us what to eat. It's up to us to do it. You got to decide what you're going to do and how you're going to eat it. Stop making excuses for the stuff that you know you shouldn't eat and you eat anyway. Stop make, I, I stopped making excuses. If I want to eat something, I go and I eat, I eat it and move on. I just go back and praise the Lord. Now you got to bless me. I'm trying to do better. Amen. Be honest with God. I'm trying to, I'm trying to give this health message here. And I'm beating myself to death. I'm honest. I'm honest. Praise God. But that's how you're going to grow in Christ, being honest. Isn't that right? Praise the Lord. Despite human sin and the corruption of the earth, God graciously presents anew to fallen humanity the same task of exercising dominion over the, over the world, primarily through procreation. Now, there's a whole lot there, and, that, and I'm not going to get to it, but I'm going to say it like this. You have dominion. All right? I want you to follow this, then I'm going to be done. Praise God. Okay, let's look at dominion. You are what you eat. If I'm eating the wrong stuff, then I can't think straight. My blood, my blood becomes polluted, and I become sick. So the enemy comes with the, in the pollution, affi afflicts me. I can't think, so he... He has me on the wrong track. I can't hear the word of God. I can't study because I'm dealing with the issues that I have. So if I'm dealing with all that, how am I going to grow? How can I take dominion over my life and the enemy that's trying to take me over and stop me from making it to the kingdom? Can't do it. You're going back and forth. You do the things of the world because you got so much stuff inside of you that you decided to eat. You've impacted your body so much until you can't respond to the call of God when he calls you to do it. So how does that impact the ministry that you're supposed to do? You're not effective. People don't get convicted when you talk to them. People don't follow you when you try to get in Bible studies because they're looking at you. How are you going to pray for somebody to get well and you're sick? You can pray and God will bless but how much more effective would it be if you told them, no, I don't have to pray for you. Do this, 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 and this, and you follow this plan, and God will heal you. God already gave us the plan about healing, didn't he? But we don't follow it. So God has to use people with the gift of healing. He's blessed me to get your attention to heal. But what would, what would it be like if everybody in here had the gift of healing? And anybody that walked through that door got, became well. And not only that, you told them, in order to maintain your healing, here's what you have to do. That'd be powerful, wouldn't it? We can do that. But I can't push you. All I can do is present it. I don't, saints, when I was young, I'd push like crazy. I don't do that anymore. I just present I've told people to do certain things, fast, pray before God when they had conditions, and the ones that did it, God healed them. I've watched individuals that are naturopathic doctors, like Dr. Alana, work with individuals, the people listened to them, followed their instructions, and God healed them. 
That's what God wants to do. He just wants to heal. He just wants to bless. I have a lot of information, but I'm not going to I'm not going to give that. I will say this. Generally in nature, carnivorous animals like lions and tigers that eat other animals are fierce and aggressive. While those that don't eat, think about it, those that eat grass. Now an elephant eats grass. As big as an elephant that eats grass and the trunks on trees, is a vegetarian. Giraffe is a vegetarian. You have all these animals that are big animals, fast animals that are vegetarians. And look at the ones that eat them, how aggressive they are. Now, if, that, if the blood of a an an dead animal is in your system, how's that going to impact you in your thinking and your emotions? I didn't even get into emotions. What you eat impacts your emotions and how you act and how you respond. Remember I said earlier, what you eat can can impact what decisions that you make during the day just by what you eat. I'm going to give you an example. During the Gulf War of 1992, U.S. Marines getting ready to go into action were supplied with 50,000 turkeys in addition to the normal abundant meat ra rations. The reason, they said the they are soldiers and have to eat a lot of meat. In other words, they have to attack, and meat helps them make, makes them aggressive. And I was beginning to think about this when I was over, I don't talk too much, but when I was over in Vietnam, and I began to, as I was studying, I read that, I began to think about what they used to give us and what they gave the guys in the first cab, and for, yeah, the first cab, when they would go out, things that they would eat. And it began to dawn on me the rations and things that they ate and the attitude that they have when they would come out, of, come out of the jungle. Well, here's my whole point. God gave us the formula to be, to be healthy. It's up to us to do it. It's up to us. You can make all the excuses in the world, but I stand before you I don't have arthritis. I don't have sugar diabetes. I don't have anything. My blood pressure was a little high, and that's going down. Because I'm doing the stuff that I need to do. I'm not bragging. I'm simply saying I'm, I got to work on myself. But you got to work on yourself. Because in order for us to continue to build, we got to be stronger, both physically and emotionally. And we do that through what we eat. What we eat will determine how much time we spend with God and how much time we're going to spend in prayer by what we eat. Normally, I would get more into the scripture, but I really wanted to get your attention. Some people will receive it, some people won't. I, I, I have no control over that. But I think what I'll do is at least once a quarter, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach on health. I haven't been doing it, but I'm going to do it at least once a quarter. I've got to remind us, and I'll give you some more information. I'll have some handouts. The saints, I'm, wa I'm riding down the street, and I'm looking at people that are so huge, I just can't believe it. This is, this is not normal. It's just not normal. God knows I'm not talking about anybody in here, but I've seen folk, I, I just can't believe it. My heart breaks when I see people in those kind of conditions. We need to be in a position to help them. We as a church, we need to be in that kind of position. Amen? I'm going to ask you to bow your head just for a moment. Just bow your head. I want you to think about this short message that I gave.
what you think about it. I want to say a prayer. If you'd like to make a, uh, if you like, if you would like to individually recommit your life to Christ in health, I'm not asking you to be a vegetarian or a vegan. I'm not asking you to be anything. I'm asking you, if you would like to eat better, and you're going to work on some areas in your own life, I want you to come up or stand where you are. Just stand where you are. If you'd like to recommit your life in in health. Just stand where you are as I pray. Just stand. God's going to bless you. Lord, look on those that are standing. You are so good. You're so good. Thank you for touching their lives. For this short talk. For this message of awakening in health. For this message that touched the very fiber of our physical makeup. We as a, a nation, we're in trouble, Lord. We're really in trouble. The producers of the foods that we eat have forgotten about the health benefits that they were supposed to give us. You gave Kellogg the Kellogg cornflake. You gave it to him. That was a healthy cereal. But all of it's changed now. All of it's changed. Open the door in our hearts. And each one that's standing, show them, show me, what we all need to do individually so that we can capture the vitality of our health so that we can walk closer with you so our mind will be open and not closed. So that when we go down in prayer, we'll hear your voice clearly so that when we have checkups, the doctor will be amazed at how healthy we are. So that as cancer and all the other diseases are ravaging all around us, we'll be able to minister to those individuals the word of God. Yes, change us, Lord. Change us. We can't do it without you. But, we, but you need our affirmation. You need us to say, here I am, Lord. Change me. Now, Bless us. Bless us in ways through our health that others will take notice that we've made a change. Bless us. The others will see the change over time and they will decide to make changes and thereby giving a ministry of health through Christ. Bless us so that when we go visit relatives, they'll see the difference. Just looking at us, they'll see that we've changed. They'll see it. I thank you, Lord, for those willing to make the stand, for those willing to stand with Jesus. Encourage our hearts as we make this stand by ourselves, individually. It's going to be hard sometimes, but give us the strength to fight through the hard times and the temptations that we will become stronger Christians. Those that are standing may now be seated. Our Father, bless the church. Those that didn't stand, that should have stood. Give them the willpower. The willpower to make a change. Give them that willpower. And those that have already done it, those that are already on the the, the, the eating plan, the health, health conscious, the reading and eating those things that have been a blessing to them, let them continue. Let them be a light right here at Emmanuel. Let us be encouraged. Let us be encouraged, Lord. 
For we are your children, called by your name. Bless us to continue to minister and be strengthened by the word of God, but physically, that we will seek the remedy for us individually to grow stronger in our walk with you. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.